Om Namo Narayana. Welcome back to Book 3 of the Ramayana. We are nearing the end. We're in like the last 10 chapters. Chapter 64 is called Rama Finds Traces of Attack on Sita. That pitiable man in a pitiable tome told his brother Lakshmana, Oh Lakshmana, go speedily to Godavari River and find out whether Sita has gone there to pluck the lotus flowers. When Rama said like this, Lakshmana, a winner of warriors and a destroyer of enemies, went to Godavari, which was very pretty. After searching the river banks and not finding her, he came back and said, My brother, I could not find her in or around the river, and she did not answer me when I shouted loudly. Where else could Sita, the destroyer of sorrow, have gone? I am unable to find where she has gone. After hearing the words of his brother, Rama, who was deluded by great sorrow and grief, himself went to the river Godavari, and then not being able to find her, said, Where are you, Sita? The elements of nature did not tell him that she had been taken away by the king of Rakshasas, who deserves punishment, nor did the river Godavari tell Rama about it. Though the elements encouraged the river to tell Rama about his beloved, when she was asked by Rama about Sita, she did not say a word. Thinking about the fierce form of Ravana, as well as thinking about that bad soul and getting scared, the river was too scared to speak about Sita. Being disappointed because he was not able to find Sita near the river, Rama said to his brother, O oh, gentle one, this river is not replying to my question. Oh, when I see Chanaka as well as my mother, what shall I tell them about Sita, who is dear to me? Where has she gone, who has removed all my suffering due to being banished from the kingdom as well as when I was suffering due to a hard life in the forest so long ago? Without any people from my clan and not being able to see the princess, I will be kept awake at night which will appear eternally long. I will again roam about in Gandavara. I will again roam about in Godavari, Janasthana, and Prasaravana mountain to see if maybe Sita can be seen anywhere. Oh, my brother, that deer is looking at me again and again as if he wants to tell me something. Rama, with his eyes cluttered over by tears, asked the deer, in response to the gestures, Where is Sita? When the king asked the deer like this, the deer swiftly got up, and the deer looked in the sky, towards the southern direction, which was the direction Sita had been taken away. And looking at the king, then ran the path of the direction. When Lakshmana wanted to know more about that path, the deer looked further at that path and wanted to show him the direction. Lakshmana clearly understood the indications and with sorrow he said to Rama, My brother, when you asked where is Sita, the deer got up and went on seeing the southern direction. My brother, I think it would be right for us to go in the southwestern direction and then possibly we may find indications about Sita. Agreeing to this, the sons of the Kakushi clan started toward the southern directions, carefully examining the path chosen by Lakshmana. The brothers, talking with each other, went by that path and saw some flowers which had fallen on the earth. Rama, seeing the rain of flowers on the earth, said the following to Lakshmana, My brother, I recognize these flowers, for they are the same ones given to me by Sita this morning. I think that the sun, the wind, and the earth are preserving these flowers and doing a rendering act to please me. After saying like this to Lakshmana, Rama addressed the Prasaravana mountain and said, O oh Lord of the mountain! Have you seen a very pretty lady Sita in the forest sorrowing for me? Like a lion addressing a small animal, that angry Rama said, Mountain, I will destroy all your slopes if you do not show me 
the gold like Sita. When Rama told the mountain like this, though it appeared to tell him something, it did not show Sita to Rama. Then Rama told the mountain, you could be completely burnt by my arrows and made into ash, and later you would not be fit to serve anyone, being bereft of trees and grasses. Akshamana, if this river does not tell me about the noble Sita with a moon-like face, by my arrows I will make it dry. When the very angry Rama was talking as if he wanted to burn the entire earth, his eyes then saw the big footprints of a Rakshasa, and that of a frightened Sita running here and there, as if she was anxious to see Rama, and it appeared, looking at the footprints, that the Rakshasa was chasing Sita. When Rama noticed the movement of Sita and the Rakshasa, he then saw a broken bow and quiver which were lying scattered, as well as many broken pieces of a chariot. And his mind was greatly agitated, and he said to his brother, See, the broken pieces of Sita's ornaments and many kinds of garlands belonging to her. Please also see drops of splattered blood shining like drops of shining gold spread over the earth. Lakshmana, I think that the Rakshasas, who can take any form, cut her into pieces, shared, and ate her. More than one Rakshasa might be contradicting with each other, and a great war might have been fought between them. Whose is this huge bow decorated with gold and embedded with gold which has broken and fallen here? Whose is this broken golden armor I see which shines like the morning sun, studded with precious Vitoria stones just lying on the ground? And here, whose umbrella is this which had a hundred spokes, which shines and was decorated by divine garlands with a broken handle lying on the ground? Whose devil-faced huge and fierce donkeys are these, decorated with golden plates, which have been killed in war? Whose is this great chariot, which looks like a burning fire, which has a shining flag now broken and lying upside down? Whose are these blunted arrows, decorated with gold, which are as big as the axle of a chariot, which has been scattered all over? Who has done these monstrous deeds? Lakshmana, see these two broken quivers full of arrows, and the charioteer with whips and bridles in his hand. Who might have killed him? Oh, who are these two fan-carriers who have been slain and now lie down here before us? Whose headdress and earrings are these which have been decorated by gems? From all these, it is evident they belong to a male Rakshasa, and you now see that enmity with them, which has increased a hundredfold, and <laughs> I shall kill all, all of the Rakshasas. These Rakshasas, with horrible forms, who can change their form at will, might have abducted, or eaten, or killed that sage-like lady, and in this great forest, her dharma did not protect her. If Sita has been eaten or carried away by someone in this world, no god can make me happy. All the beings of this world would disrespect me, one who is compassionate. The gods of the three worlds will consider me weak because I am soft to look at when it comes to the being of all, and I am a man of self-restraint and have a merciful heart. Ah, oh, Lakshmana, after reaching me, all good characters have become bad, but from now onwards, my character will shine forth to kill all beings, including Rakshasas. From now on, Yakshas, Gandavaras, devils, Rakshasas, Kinaras, and even men will not be peaceful. You will see that by my arrows and weapons, I will fill up the entire sky and make it impossible for those who travel in all three worlds to ever descend to the earth again. In all three worlds, by my axe, the movement of the planets will be obstructed. The movement of the moon would be obstructed. The luster of the sun 
the wind, the fire would be reduced. The top of the mountains will be crushed. All water bodies will be completely dried up. Trees, creepers, and shrubs will be destroyed, and the oceans will be put to an end. And thus I will do acts destroying the entire world, if my god does not return Sita safely. Within a short time, they will see my valor and prowess. No one will be able to fly. The gods would not be able to fly in the sky because of the net created by my arrows, and the weapons will cover it completely. Dressed by my arrows, beasts and birds will get madly disturbed and cross all limits. By pulling the arrows up to my ears, which cannot be resisted by anyone, and sending them off, I will make this world devoid of ghosts and rakshasas for the sake of Sita. Now if devas would realize the power of my feathered arrows sent by me in great anger would reach to great distances. Neither devas, asuras, ghosts, and rakshasas will exist in all three worlds which will be destroyed by my anger. The worlds of devas, asuras, yakshasas, and those of the rakshasas also, after being broken into pieces by my arrow, will not exist. If the gods do not give me back my Sita, who has either been abducted or killed, I will destroy all the worlds and make them without boundaries. If my darling Sita, in her real form, is not given back to me, I will destroy all the three worlds, including all moving or stable beings living in them. After saying this with eyes turned red to the anger, Rama, who can conquer the cities of his enemies, took his bow and took out a glowing arrow comparable to a poisonous snake and connected the arrow to the bow and looked like the fire at the time of the deluge and said the following, Just as time cannot stop the progression of age and occurring of death in the case of all beings, my brother, Lakshmana, nobody can prevent me when I'm angry. I would burn the entire world, including devas, gandavaras, human beings, serpents, mountains, if I am not handed over Sita, who has pretty teeth, who does not have any blame, and who is the princess of Mathila. Thus ends chapter 64. Chapter 65 is called Lakshmana's Advice to Rama. Rama, who was deeply pained by the abduction of Sita, was burning like fire at the time of the deluge and wanting to destroy the entire planet, and was taking deep, difficult breaths again and again and looked like Lord Shiva getting ready to destroy all the worlds at the end of all the yugas. Seeing Rama angry and in a never-before-seen form, Lakshmana saluted him first and spoke to him with his mouth dried up and nervous. My brother, previously you were gentle, self-restrained, and used to wish for the welfare of all beings. I think that you should not become a slave to anger and start thinking as earlier. The shining in the case of the moon, the sun, and wealth... The blowing in the case of the wind and patience in case of the earth has always been present, and like that, your fame rests on yourself. How can you destroy the world for the sake of a mistake committed by one person? You do not know who is responsible for breaking the chariot. You do not know who is responsible for breaking the chariot used in war, and also do not know for what reason it was broken. This place is damaged by the hooves of horses and chariots, and there are drops of blood all over, and so it appears that a great battle was fought here. Rama, this war appears to be fought with only one person present, as the footprints of a second are not visible to me. It is not proper for just one person to destroy the world, and the lords of the earth should be soft, peaceful, and punish only if there is a good reason. You are the source of protection of all beings and their ultimate destination, so who will think that of losing one's life is desirable? 
the rivers, the sea, the mountains, devas, gandavaras, and danavas are also good people and are not capable of doing harm to you like the people who observe religious vows. My king, it is proper for you to search for that person who has abducted Sita, followed by me, armed with bows and arrows, and helped by other sages. We will search in the sea, the mountains, the forests, and the caves, and many terrible rivers and lotus ponds. Relentlessly, I promise you, we will search also in the world of devas and gandavaras for the one who abducted your wife until we find the one who abducted her. My brother Rama, if the gods do not return your wife with a gentle request, then at the right time we will take suitable action. If you are not able to get back Sita by sincerity, simplicity, humility, and diplomacy, then destroy them with your arrows, decorated by gold, which are like the Raja Yuda of the great Indra himself. Thus ends chapter 65.